All right, we're back with some more summaries of what's going on at Starbase. You know the drill. We sit back, we watch the video, we see what we can see. It's not scripted, it's stream of consciousness, and my name is John, or Das. That was some Ship 33 testing to kick it off. This Christmas package, wrapped with care, being delivered to the production site, looks like it might be a flap for a future ship. Where do those come from? I wonder, why aren't they just making them there? Why do they make those flaps somewhere else and transport them to Starbase? Is it SpaceX making them elsewhere and transporting them? Nah, interesting to think about. But this over at Massey's is a Ship 33 static fire. You can see from the uh, load, the ice there, that they filled up the tanks almost completely. And you get multiple flashes down at the bottom. You see how it like puffs and then puffs again as they ignite the two different banks of engines, the sea level and the raptor engines, or the sea level and the, the vacuum engines, actually, ignite in sort of two waves. So a set of engines being ignited there between the full load and the two distinct ignitions. And fast forward there, the Boca Chica Air Force patrolling the rounds over on the Rio Grande. This is such a cool angle here. This is actually from the Rocket Ranch outpost over there. Massive thanks to them. When we knew they were going to start doing lots of testing over at Massey's, we uh, wanted to get some good views of it, and Rocket Ranch had some fantastic views. So if you're looking for a place to watch the launch from, make sure you check out Rocket Ranch. You need to put a uh, link down in the description so you know who they are. Back over to the production site. The night time is the right time to get the shots through the windows there. Dad would say I'm a poet, and I didn't even know it, but I didn't intend it. Really, looking at the parade of nose cones that we can see at the top of. I almost wish they had little signs. Wouldn't it be cool if they had little public-facing signs that said what that nose cone was? That would be cool. I guess it would depend on where you were standing. And then you'd need to be like, stand here, and then you could see the signs, and they would line up. But there's no parking things there, and you have to like walk a long ways. To d I don't know. Anyways, it would be cool. That is an interesting delivery. <laughs> This is over at the assembly yard again, uh, Pad B's orbital launch mount. Remember, I do read all the comments, and I saw some people saying, oh, you need to make it more accessible to people. Instead of ever saying OLM, you should just say orbital launch mount. Gosh, yeah, I mean, I get it, but when you say orbital launch mount 8,000 times a day, it's way easier to say OLM than orbital launch mount. <laughs> oh, look, this is a... A, a deluge plate, right? You see how it's got a cavity in the center of it? It's two plates with a, with a rib structure in between. Water flows in that center part. I mean, rewind it and see that, because that looks like it is a deluge plate with that channel for the deluge water in the middle. This just says structure moved in. This is a single wide SPMT. I guess we're going to start <laughs> referring to them like they're trailers. <laughs> single wide, double wide SPMT is the park edition. Uh, really interesting that they that thing was wobbling back and forth like teeter-tottering interesting that they didn't have two spmts on that just because of how wide it was but i guess the mass of it and sort of the lever arm and the inertia or momentum that it could get moving wasn't that big of a deal if you just strapped it down on the center of mass yeah anyways little teeny tiny excavator for scale <laughs> looks like toy trucks working in the lower left hand corner there uh, I love when you see little, like, big equipment like that. Oh, if I'm standing next to it, it's huge. And then it's in the scene here at Starbase. It is not very huge. Well, it's still huge. It's the same size. It's just that Starbase is bigger. Looks like we're moving some things over here. Got a couple work platforms up. That's the booster shield, booster quick disconnect shield in the background there. We saw some welding here in the last video. There's that big shiny chopstick actuator. Look at that hydraulic actuator to uh, extend and retract, open and close. What's the right verbs? Verb? Ver verbi? How do you con conjugate verbs? Uh, <laughs> that is the completely wrong question. But the big linear actuator, not linear actuator, the big hydraulic actuators there. I was shopping for linear actuators for a different project that open and close the chopsticks. Here we've got our toy construction equipment working. The scale of the second tower totally dwarfing the scale of these not small machines. And a bird in the foreground. Look at that bird. It's just out there eating. It's fine. It's not being bothered. Egret of some sort. 
Oh, look, that's the that's the SpaceX sign on the right-hand side. Do you see the little the swoop from the SpaceX X? Yeah, that's not there anymore. <laughs> I guess they decided they needed a photo op in a different location. Here we're welding something together. Just over in the area. A lot of work happening here. A little bit difficult to see. We've got a Monty Python sort of effect here where there's probably construction noises happening, but you can't really see what's happening because of the berm. Maybe a huge wooden badger is going to roll out from behind the berm before launch. Going SpaceX, it would be a stainless steel badger. Whatever. <laughs> Sounds like something you could build in Kerbal and launch on top of a starship. But quite a few shots Mary caught here of the work that is happening. Now this is from a completely different angle. This has this tower in the foreground and you can see those two big subcoolers. They've been working in plumbing in, working on plumbing in. Those decorative palm trees in the bathroom slash break area need a little bit of TLC it looks like. Yes. Okay, so this is another static fire that happened with Ship 33 over at Massey's. But this one we think is a single engine static fire because that's what SpaceX posted on X. They posted up the six engine static fire uh, on December 15th and that sort of matched up with a the date there. And then there we didn't see the full load. You didn't see that multiple puff happen at the bottom. So that static fire on the 17th or 16th late looks like it was uh, the single engine static fire. And then when it was done, the ship on its static fire stand, there you can see that, is rolling back. You know, something that I actually don't know that I need to learn is how that stand rolls over the flame trench testing area. Do the SPMTs just go on either side of the flame trench and there's a, there's a cavity in the middle? I severely doubt there's a bridge or something that retracts. I've seen that on other flame trenches, uh, but mostly for humans walking around underneath the rocket, not carrying the mass of the entire rocket. I, I, I should just ask the team, is what I should do, how that specifically works. I know Jack, when Jack gets back into town, uh, Jack and Mary were looking at doing another flyover. And maybe, it, it, honestly, the images probably exist, and I just haven't looked at them with that specific eye for detail. Anyways, back into the Mega Bay. Looking good. By the way, if you take images from this camera, not this camera, this is Mary's camera, uh, CP11 over there, if you take them from our live stream and you post them on X, we can tell because there's a scratch across the middle of the lens, and I'm like... Does that image have a scratch exactly where our image have a, has a scratch? You see this? Okay, you see the scratch right there? Look, you can see it. I'm sorry for pointing it out, but I know it. And when people steal our pictures and post them as if they were their own pictures, I see the scratch and I'm like, wait a minute. Jeez, you could at least say thanks NSF or like link to Starbase Life. Oh, look, a grid fin. <laughs> it's not that huge of a deal. It's more of a playful rant because we don't put watermarks on Every we don't put it right in the middle of the image, right? That would be dumb. Uh, but that scratch is just sort of a watermark. It's like a camera fingerprint. And we can tell. So here's more construction on the flame deflector over there. We've seen them craning and welding that together quite a bit. And what is this? We've got a little smaller part. Was that like, a, like an internal panel or something? It's getting lifted up and time-lapsed, then it's waggling because the wind is blowing on it, and then we've got somebody there guiding it into position. Oh, look at this. That looks like a deluge plate piece. Th that's the same piece that has those channels in it. I don't know if it's the same piece, but it's a similar piece to what we saw in the truck early in the video for the water to flow through it, and then they're craning that around and putting it in the right location. Interesting. Is that on the top? deck that looks that does that mean okay I'm making stuff up here because I'm just watching the video for the first time does that mean that the top deck of the new orbital launch mount is also going to have uh, water cooled plates or did I see that incorrectly? Correct me down below. You know I read the comments. You know I'm not sitting here like, oh, I know everything about Starbase. Look at me, right? Oh, hey, shuttle. There's a shuttle tanker. Um, but you know that's not how I do these videos. I just watch them and I sort of figure things out. The theme is roadside rocket science. So let me know if my read on that situation was incorrect. The, the 
water channeling plate being installed on the top deck of that new o OLM. There we've got some, are those high pressure horizontal tanks? A lot of times you see those skinny tanks. Yeah, there you go, look at that. It's like, it's like palletized. Oh, there's a name for this. I would have to go look it up. Uh, where they make these racks of high pressure tanks and they're not really palletized but it's the same sort of thing it's like a consistent size that can be stacked and and sort of put together in infrastructure see look at these all these things match interesting i looked it up once and i didn't know if it was like a a, a kleenex thing right where is that the industry term for these uh, containerized tankage or was that a the industry term, or was it the brand name for that one thing that I found on the internet? I'll have to do some more research on that. We'll talk about it next time I see it. Here we go. If you didn't know, SpaceX was changing the name of the company. Uh, we all know that SpaceX hates shortening things. They don't like to use acronyms. Space Exploration Technologies. They're probably going to install a new sign here and no longer shorten their name, which confuses the public wouldn't know who they were talking about if you said SpaceX. They need to put a sign up there that has the full proper name, Space Exploration Technologies. I'm kidding. They're just removing the sign. They're probably changing that gate or something like that. <laughs> Here's the Christmas parade. We got a decked out Cybertruck. Careful, because the entire skin of the Cybertruck would be conductive. Being made of <laughs> stainless steel. I actually don't know. I haven't put a battery to the skin of a Cybertruck. I would assume it would be conductive, but don't try this at home. Uh, pulling out some inflatables. We've got a mariachi screw suit there. There's the big lift. The 100 meter aerial work platform. That is an inflatable starship, which is interesting. You have real starships, which are arguably inflatable starships because you pressurize them while you're moving them. Why do you need to buy an inflatable starship? for the Christmas parade when you have real inflatable starships that you could just move down the road like you did last year? The answer, of course, is maybe this is going elsewhere. It's going to go through the middle of Brownsville or something, and they cannot transport starships up into town because power lines exist. Power lines and street lights and street signs and stoplights and things that hang over the road. So an inflatable starship makes a lot more sense there. Now, I do wish, I, I hope a lot of times you'll just see them on flatbed trailers with regular old trucks pulling them, but I would I think it would be really cool if they took an SPMT into town somehow. Extra miles on your SPMT, but having an SPMT in the parade would make it even cooler than just like Joe's hot shot service truck with a flatbed gooseneck behind it and an inflatable starship on top of it. Truly scaling their operations there. But for now, that's the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for marrying everybody for getting the shots, and we'll see you nerds later.